Virtual reality for Google Cardboard is very limited when it comes to interactions because of the controls. We have only one input, the touch. To improve that, you can use Bluetooth controls and in this video I will show you how to move a player and interact with an object using a controller. So let's begin! To start, I have a new scene here with the Google VR package important. I'll leave the link in the description below for you guys to download it. Let's first add the components to work with VR, which are the event system and editor emulator. I will search them here on the search bar, typing GVRE, and once I have them, I drag into the hierarchy. Now I'm going to create our player. For that, we need a new game object. I will reset the transform values, rename it to player, and in here we need the component character controller. So let's add that. After, drag the main camera inside our player and inside the camera, let's add the reticle pointer to interact with the object. So in the search bar, we search for GVR reticle pointer, drag in here. Now, the last thing we need before creating our script is add the GVR pointer physics ray caster to our main camera. Select the camera, add component and search for that script. Once our player is ready, let's create our script. I'll create a new script called player CTRL and add to our player here. Now let's open the script. To start with our script, let's first create a public float speed. I'll give you a value of 3.5 F and now a private float gravity. I'll give you a value of 10 F and a private character controller. I'll give it a name of controller and inside of start method we need to get this component the controller so controller equals get component character controller so that way we're getting the component attached to our player great now let's create a method that will handle our inputs from the controller and make our player move so down here after update let's create a method called player movement and in here first we need to get the inputs so float horizontal equals input dot get axis. I'll give it a horizontal and new float vertical equals input dot get axis vertical. Next step, we need to apply those inputs to our directions. So we need a vector tree, I'll call direction, equals new vector tree. And on x axis, we pass the horizontal. And y axis is zero, because we don't want to go up, we want to go left and right. So that we use the z axis. And then here we pass the vertical, which is going to the vertical input. Great. Down here, vector tree. I'll call it velocity. We need to apply a velocity to our body. So velocity equals, so it's going to be direction times speed. Now velocity equals camera dot main dot transform dot transform direction. And we are going to pass velocity. What we are doing here is reassign the velocity values according to our camera global transform values because we want to move our player in the direction which the camera is facing and not the actual player game object. I will show you that later. Here we apply the gravity velocity dot y minus equals gravity and to make the player move controller dot move we're gonna pass velocity times time dot delta time. Don't forget to call the method on update. So player movement method. Save it and let's test now. Here on Unity, let's create a floor for our character to be able to move. Right click, 3D object, plane, reset the values and bring the player a little bit up. Now it's time to test. For this example, I'm using an Xbox controller but it's going to work the same way for you guys. As you can see, I can move all directions and if I rotate the camera, the movement is still working good. That's the reason we use the transform direction in our script, otherwise it wouldn't work properly. Now let's add an object for us to interact with. 
For that, I will add a 3D cube. I'm going to position in front of our player and I will create a material just to give it a color. Now, with everything done, let's create a script to make this cube rotate. I will create inside our script folder and give it a name of rotate cube. Here in our script, we don't need a start method, so let's delete it. And we need a public float spin force. I'll give it a value of 45. And a private pool is spinning equals false. Down here, after the method update, let's create another method public void change spin. And inside here is spinning equals negative is spinning. Inside update here, what we want if is spinning equals true, we want transform the rotate and we're gonna give it a value of zero spin force times time dot delta time and the z axis we want zero again. Perfect. So, else if is spinning is negative equals false. Sorry. So transform the rotate and here zero zero zero. Perfect. We save the script and let's go back to Unity now. Here on Unity, first add the script to the cube and let's create a tag that will help us to interact with the object. So tag add tag. Click on the plus icon here, I'll call it rotate cube, save it, back to the cube, and now we have the tag here available to us. So choose the tag. Now let's go back to our player script and create this interaction. Here in our player script, we need two variables, public int distance of raycast. We're gonna use a raycast to interact. So we're gonna create another one. So, and here, down here, private raycast hit. I'll call it just underline hit. And inside our update, we need to create a raycast. So, ray, I'll call it ray, equals camera dot main dot view point to ray. So here, new vector tree and 0.5f, 0. 0.5f and on the z 0f. Close the brackets and the raycast is created. So now we need to get the game object our raycast is pointing. So if physics dot raycast and here ray and out hit and then now the distance so distance of raycast. Okay, so we're getting the object. And in here, if input the get button down, and we're gonna pass fire one, which is pre configured from Unity, and hit the transform the compare tag. So that's why we created the tag. So we're gonna call it rotate cube. So if we press the fire button and the tag is cube, so hit dot transform dot game object dot get component we're gonna get the script so rotate cube perfect dot chain spin save the script and let's head back to unity let's test now and if i look to the cube and press a button of the xbox controller you can see the cube starts to rotate that's great if in any case your interaction does not work with the controller, check the input values from this controller you're using and change the condition in the player script. In this case, I'm using Fire1, which is already configured from Unity, and that's equivalent of my A button, okay? So great job, guys. Okay, this is it for this video. So if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you have any question, suggestion, or have any issue with the project, leave in a comment below. I always answer everybody. So enjoy your game and see you on the next one.